This chap is one of a rare few able to blow up a balloon while pedalling on a unicycle. His tyre is made of tough, flexible rubber. We need a nose! A material so wonderful that we can make balloons from it and even twist it into weird animal shapes. Its remarkable, stretchy, waterproof and airtight properties make rubber useful for all sorts of things, from Macintosh coats to the sink plunger on a Dalek's arm. Why, even the great wheels of a jumbo jet flying high in the sky are made from rubber. The story of this incredible compound has a lot to do with this place, Kew Gardens in London. Not so long ago, all the rubber in the world came from the sap of jealously guarded trees growing only in the rainforests of Brazil. The natives tapped the trees by cutting into the bark. They called the emerging sap caoutchouc and used it to make their shoes. Our name for it is latex. Before long, the greedy British wanted latex for empire building and sent a man to steal a load of rubber tree seeds. He brought a shipload back here to Kew and the Brazilians were very cross about it. A fully grown rubber tree, or Hevia brasiliensis, can fill a bucket with latex in just one day. But this baby tree is the only one left in queue, and she has managed but a cupful. However, she has saved our caravan from a dangerous trek through the leech-infested jungles of Malaysia, where millions of trees are tapped to fill great big barrels like this. Today, the milky white latex is being dyed red, but you could use any colour of the rainbow. These are the balloon-shaped moulds that have to be dipped into the coloured latex. But not before a soaking in brown, salty water. They get two dips in this stuff, the first being a little deeper than the second. Before the latex was sent from the Malaysian plantations, it was mixed with alkalis to keep it smooth and runny. When the salty formers connect with the latex, the salt will neutralise the effect of the alkalis so the latex can coagulate, forming a thin, rubbery skin on the surface of each mould. The old jungle-dwelling Brazilians made their shoes in more or less the same way. They would dip their salty old feet into latex and watch the latex turn into sticky rubber under the hot tropical sun. The shoes were a perfect fit every time, very soft and very comfortable, but probably a bit on the sweaty side. Because the second salt dip was shallower, the balloon's rubber neck is slightly thinner than the body, so wheels can easily roll it over to make the rubber ring that you pop into your mouth when you puff the balloon up. Oddly enough, however, the ring is the one part of the balloon that doesn't seem to get a wash. The moulds are taken up to pass along the top of the machine where blowers puff warm air over the rubber to make sure it is properly set. Here, water is being used as a lubricant, helping spongy grabbers to get the balloons off their formers. And down from the machine they fall, ready to be packed up and posted to huffy puffy party people all around the planet. Before they're sent away, it's usually a good idea to test a couple out. The quality controller takes the balloons near to bursting point, and sometimes beyond it. In this factory, they use huge sheets of nylon to make balloons as big as houses, with letters to match, so they can be read high in the sky. 
Using scissors, knives, and little circular saws, the material is cut up into various shapes and sizes so ladies can come from all parts of the factory to sew it back together again. I beg your pardon? Hot air balloons are made in many bright and vivid colours, so airplanes are less likely to fly into them. The sheets are stitched with special seams, extra strong to hold the pieces together very firmly. The strength is crucial, not least because these balloons are made to take great baskets into the sky, sometimes with as many as a dozen people inside. Any kind of failure would be deadly, with screaming balloonists raining down upon us all. So testing is taken very seriously indeed. It requires a great fan. Most of us don't think of air as being heavy, but in fact, it weighs quite a lot. The air in the average house weighs about a ton, and that's roughly the same as the air in a great big whale of a balloon such as this. The tester goes inside. And despite having one or two internal wind problems, he is pleased to perform the traditional balloon maker's dance. At last it's time for the ultimate test. Will she fly? Well, she seems to be doing a very good job indeed. And that's lucky for the chap inside, because he's got a wonderful view. And off he floats, because his hot air is lighter than the cool stuff surrounding him. Too much hot air, of course, and he'll go up into space. So let's wish him the best of luck. Or, as the first balloonists, the Montgolfier brothers of France would have said, Bon voyage!